Hey, what's up? It's Mike coming to talk with you guys about tonight's episode of Catfish. Um, our guest host for tonight's episode was this guy named Tyler Oakley, who's, I guess, uh, popular from YouTube. He's a YouTube star. I think they were saying he has like 5 million subscribers. I mean, so he must be <laughs> he must be doing something right. Anyway, he's helping Neve out on this episode. Uh, and we are talking with this 21, 22 year old uh, young woman named Daisy from Indiana. She's been dating this guy or in a relationship, a situation ship with this guy named Marcus from Indy, no, from Ohio, from Cincinnati. And did they say his age? It, it don't matter. Uh, anyway, they met over Instagram. I guess she came across his pictures, uh, thought he was cute. He's like, <laughs> give me your phone number so we can text or whatever. She did, and she posted it on right in the comment section. I think they were trying to say that uh, this situation happened before Instagram had the direct message option. So it was just out, her phone number was in the public eye for anybody to see who follows him. But she said like right afterwards, she deleted it. I guess she waited until she got a text message from him to know that he got and then deleted the, the comment or whatever. Anyway, they've been in this situation for like two years. Uh, they call her. Now, we ain't even, it don't matter about the phone call because they're going to go travel down there to Cincinnati and we're going to hear the same stuff. Now, who is Daisy? Daisy uh, is in this relationship with Marcus, even though they haven't met, they haven't talked on the phone. Uh, she sees pictures of him via Instagram, but they do text back and forth. But he was the guy who was there for her, who said all the right things to help comfort her when she was going through all her different situations. I think she mentioned one tragedy that happened is when she was in high school, her one of her sisters uh, ran into a bridge, uh, had a car accident and died. And then she also shared with us that uh, I don't re recall what age she was, but she was in a relationship or dating a, a girl and her family didn't really approve. But there was this one time where her, she was with most of her family, with the exception of her father, and they were going to take her to the train station to meet with uh, her girlfriend. But then when they got back to the house, her father had had an aneurysm and died on the floor. And most of the family at that point started to blame her for her father's death. Like, if we wasn't out trying to deal with your bullshit and help you out, then we could have been here for him and maybe possibly saved his life. So she had to deal with that guilt as well. And I guess he was a listening ear for her. Marcus was. Well, can you really? Yeah, he was a, a good reader because they never talked on the phone, which is quite odd. Now, when Neve found out that they never had a phone conversation, he's like, well, maybe this means that it's a woman that you're talking to because otherwise it could be any guy. I mean, <laughs> she can't tell that you're not Marcus by your voice. So what the phone, that's, that's weird to me. And I was feeling the same way. So, uh, she gave them the information for them to do their research. Uh, they, I think the first thing they used was the phone number. Oh, before we even get to the research, it was some other bullshit. She started to tell them that she spent money on this guy. And they're like, <laughs> money? Like, okay, what's, what's going on? She said uh, about $2,000 worth of uh, gifts and, and shit. And she said one time she gave him a camera, a $1,000 camera. She sent him money one time, 100, 100 bucks. And they're like, well, you... You got a lot of information. Not only do you have a, a name to be sending somebody money, you got an address. Like you, you got the shit. <laughs> so they, they're they're trying to understand. Like, okay, well, why isn't he answering the phone when you call? She also let them know that she did her own uh, search of the phone number and it pulled up a woman's name. And Neve is like, that's the shit I'm talking about because that was his theory. It has to be a woman because otherwise. This shit don't make no sense. So, okay, we're going to do our research. First thing they do is look up the phone number. Phone number pulls up a, a woman's name, a Sandra. And Neve's like, this is probably the one. She's thinking she's talking to a dude, but it's, it's Sandra. That's why they don't want to talk on the phone. Um, but then they did a search of Sandra's name and found relatives of Sandra. And one of them happened to be Marcus, who we believe this is the guy from Instagram, Marcus. And coincidentally, 
Sandra is associated with a Marcus, so it all seems like it might be legit. But then Neve has an aha moment, like, okay, well, wait a minute. We still have no proof that this is Marcus that we're talking to. We don't even know that it's a, a man because, remember, she posted her phone number on a public forum so anybody could have seen that and is now pretending to be Marcus. Even though Marcus may be a real person, this may be a real Instagram account, we don't know who the person is she, she's texting. And I'm like, you know what? You right, Neve. You, you so right. Um, but then what happened? Oh, I feel like that was the extent of their research. They didn't have to like look up any pictures because at that point they felt like the, the Instagram account was pretty legit. They go back to Daisy's house and her mom and her sister are there. And <laughs> her mom, in my mind, well, I feel like her mom was over the bullshit. Her mom lets us know that she was the one that had been getting, you know, helping her daughter pay for a lot of those gifts and she ain't got her money back. She said, my daughter will pay me back every now and then if it was less than $100, but she don't pay me shit. And then Neve is looking at old Daisy like, you had, you had us believing <laughs> that you was, you know, fronting all the cash, buying a $1,000 uh, uh, camera on your own, or being sneaky. Then they started talking about their, uh, they talked about the father and why they believe that Daisy is doing what she's doing. And, and her mom is like, she's, she's over it. She's like, I don't, this is not a real relationship. He's just using her. And they start talking about how she may be trying to reach out to Marcus and develop this relationship because he doesn't really judge her for the things that she does. And he was like, so you mean like you guys judge? Like, is that something you might want to rectify? And the mother's like, no, we cool. <laughs> we cool like it is. She does her bullshit. I do my thing. I, I don't want to change nothing. And, like, at this point, there were just conversations between the sister and the mother, and Daisy wasn't saying anything. And I'm like, this is probably what she has to deal with on a, a daily basis. You know, her mom just basically talking shit to her. Uh, talking shit like <laughs> like she's special like you can't recognize now her mom was telling her right I will say that like you can't recognize that this this guy might be a married man you falling in love with somebody you don't know this is stupid and the fact that you're sending him gifts and you asked him to send you a birthday card and he didn't say he, he couldn't do it I, I ain't gonna be able to do it and yet you still feel like there's something there I I, I was on the mom's side but now there is something strange about the relationship. I think they were saying that Daisy likes to have her mom's approval and her mom ain't about to give it. And it don't matter. They just need, they need to fix that. So Neve realized that we ain't going to get anywhere in this house with, with mama here. So he takes her to a little coffee shop and then he shares with her what they found as far as the research. And at this point, she's all in. She's ready to go and try to figure out who this guy is to meet up with him. But remember, he doesn't answer the phone. So Neve tries to reach out to him. He doesn't pick up. Neve leaves a voicemail. And now it's like, okay, what do we do now? He, the guy eventually sends Neve a text message back. Oh, before the guy sends Neve a text message, they decided amongst themselves like, hey, we got an address. And Neve started this bullshit, I feel, last year. He's like, we got an address. We already know where he stayed. So we can just show up and, and like force him to meet us. I, I'm telling you, I, that's going to get Neve's ass beat one good time and he's going to stop that shit. You, you're going to wait until you're invited. Then you're going to show up. But anyway, um, everybody else is on board. Now, they just everybody go home and they pack. The next day, Neve gets a, it may have been like later that night, Neve got a text message from old Marcus. And he like, hey, you know, I, I don't want no parts of this. I will meet old girl Daisy at my own times. I like things the way they are. We, you know, I'm, I'm not ready for all of that. And so Neve, you know, the next day, Neve shares that information with Daisy, but they ask still <laughs> headed to the airport. Like, we gonna do this shit. And I'm thinking, just the man told you he didn't want y'all to come. Then when they get to the airport, Marcus actually calls uh, Neve. 
and I was surprised. Neve kind of separated himself and was talking to him. And he's like, man, you know, I don't know about this. I, I'm not too comfortable with it. I, I'm very private. And, you know, I don't want to be known as the Marcus from Catfish for the, the next 10 years or whatever. I'm, I just, I don't think I'm ready for that. So Neve, he sees that the, he, he's steady pulling away. And I believe he thought maybe this might be the only time that uh, Daisy gets to hear his voice. So he goes and puts Daisy on the phone and she's talking to him. And I, I think old dude felt a little guilty and felt obligated to say yes when she asked, don't you want to see me? <laughs> like, you know, you don't want to indulge in all this greatness that is my beauty. And so he was like, you know, okay, I, I guess you guys can come. And so they get on the plane. They were already coming, bro. He, it wasn't nothing he can do. They get on the plane, go to Cincinnati, and then <laughs> old dude calls. No, I think he sends another text message. Or did he? No, he calls. He calls Neve, and he's like, hey, I changed my mind. I, I ain't going to be able to do it. Uh, thank you for everything, but I'm, I'm just a private person. I'm, I'm not with this TV shit. Uh, and Neve was trying to, you know, get more information from him, keep him talking. And he was like, well, thank you, and hung up. He, he wasn't trying to hear it. But later on, he sent it. I'm like, I'm tired of this back and forth. He sent a text message saying, maybe Saturday I will uh, have, like, enough confidence or feel more comfortable with this will possibly meeting up. Saturday came, and he agreed to meet up with them at some park. It took him a while to get there, but he did show up with his cousin. And the part that usually pisses me off is when they show up and they end up being the exact person that they say they are. It was him. He was very weird. I don't know if it was the fact that he was shy, but it didn't make any sense to me. I was, I was confused as to his reasoning for not wanting to meet with her. They started asking, why didn't you even want to talk to her? Now, I'm, I can agree with the fact that I love to text. That's my conversation. But... If you call me, depending on who you are, I, I will answer. I, I might side eye the phone and, you know, get angry, <laughs> but I'm still going to answer. This is somebody that you're going to, maybe she was seeing the relationship as more than what it was. That was the, another vibe that I was getting based on her. She was thinking of possibly getting into a relationship, you know, him putting a ring on her finger and all of this, or with somebody you haven't even had a conversation with or you haven't heard their voice. But that's where her mind was. And I, I'm honestly thinking that she's just looking for somebody to save, to save her from what she, the bullshit she got going on at home. That's how I felt. But like I said, he ended up being the guy. He was, you know, very timid. I, I guess you can call it timid. But then he brought his cousin with him. And they were saying, like, we didn't know she was going to actually turn out to be her. Like, we could have been getting catfish too. Like we, we, that's part of his reservation. Then old girl decided to start going in on him. Like, you know, I sent you all those gifts and you couldn't send me like not, not a birthday card or whatever. Like, what is that all about? And he's saying like, I tried to tell you in the beginning, like, don't be sending me shit. Cause you know, I, I, I can't, I can't be sending you shit. And he's like, you can't send her a postcard, a $2 postcard. And he was talking about how he had some type of financial situation and Neve was like, a postcard is $2. Like, you could have even sent her a, uh, a picture message. And he wasn't really down with that either. And I'm like, what did, he, what did she fall in love with? Because it seemed clear, it, even based on when, when Neve, they were doing their research and Neve was going over some of the text messages, I felt like the, the whole time dude was trying to let her know that, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm cool here. Like, it's not, you're making it more than what it is. I f and even when they met, I felt the same way because, you know, the initial nervousness was over. They left the park and went to like a coffee shop. Uh, one of the things that Neve and Taylor, uh, Tyler told her was that, OK, what we recognize from our initial meeting is that this guy is shy and he moves very slow. So you may you know, want to take it slow when you when you're talking to him. They give them some alone time, and she's <laughs> talking about how she has feelings for him, and he means something to her. Uh, it's like, do you know what you mean to me? And he was just looking like, you <laughs> you don't even know me. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess, you know. She like, don't, do I mean something to you? I'm like, if you don't sound, 
so thirsty. But it made me kind of feel sorry for her. But I, I didn't understand why she was being so aggressive. But I'm like, maybe she needs somebody. Or she needs validation. She needs confirmation that she is somebody and that she's wanted. And is this what's going on? But he was like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I do things in my own time. I, I take it slow. Like, she was, to me, being a, a little forward. And I guess she was trying to see, you know, do you see this going anywhere? Like, we just, <laughs> we just met. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know you. He's like, you seem cool. You know, I would, wouldn't mind being your friend. But I don't even think that's what she wanted to hear. She wanted to know that maybe... We could be friends for like 10 days, maybe have sex, uh, and then possibly get married after that. You know, day 13. Like she was looking for something she fast. Or e even if she didn't get something tangible, she needed to hear that you wanted to be more to her than what you have been. And I don't think he was willing to do that. So I was wondering how this relationship was going to work out. They did go, you know, go for a walk or whatever. But I, I don't know. This wasn't my favorite episode. I, you guys should know by now. I don't particularly care for the ones that turn out to be who they say they are. Because ain't nobody got time for that. I wanted it to be an old priest butt naked or something. Just, just real weird. But that didn't happen. They give us the follow-up. Evidently, uh, Daisy, she said she's about to start cosmetology school. Her and old dude, they still talk, but it's not like it, it was. I feel like the, the dynamic of the relationship is a little bit different. Uh, they talk to him, and he's, you know, focusing on his video production or whatever. And, you know, he they talk on the phone. They're, they're pretty good friends, but more so he still texts like what he wanted to do. So... To me, it was like a, a waste. Well, I don't know. She got to hear his voice. And then, you know, she she at least got the, the confirmation that she's actually talking to a real person. So that has to account for something. Anyway, that's all I got, people. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, take care of yourselves. Peace.